Okay, uh, Eric, let's mm-hmm. see if we can have a very, very short, I mean, you know, we'll, we'll keep these celebrity, except for the religious ones, of course, but we'll keep these little other celebrity things kind of short. And can you bring in JFK for us? It was funny, it, visually watching him, it's like he just rolled his shoulders to turn to get off the couch, mm-hmm. and he was gone. Wow. Like, there was no standing up, no walking away. It's just like he turned and then just kind of, whoop, gone. Wow, interesting. So oh, you my that? God, JFK's going to come. <clears throat> wow, you just realized that. I bet it's like, whoa. Yeah. <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, shit, oh, shit. <clears throat> <laughs> Eric's here. Oh. Chill out, Jamie. <laughs> Did you bring him? Yeah. God, I feel like I need to stand up or something. We don't have to do that, right? <laughs> Hello. No, it's very casual. Hi. Hi, Mr. President. <laughs> oh, my God. She said hello. How are you? Is this real? This is messed up. I'm standing up. <clears throat> He's standing. I don't want to be sitting down. Uh, have a seat, Mr. President. Oh, yes. Have a seat. <laughs> Eric, Jamie, where are your manners? <laughs> well, we'd like to ask you some questions. I'm sure you're used to interviews, obviously. Uh, yes, ma'am. He is. Good. Uh, I have a southern accent. Really? Oh, no, he should have a Boston accent, but, you know, Boston accents sort of sound like, um... Because when he says ma'am... Yeah, they sort of sound a little bit like a southern accent, though. You know? He's just sitting here. He's got a real thin tie on. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. White collar, nice suit, has a bit of a shine to it. Mm Mm-hmm. Or a sheen. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's a little different. It's like being on radio. Oh, okay. That's what he's telling me. These interviews, it's like doing radio interviews, which Mm -hmm. is, you know, mostly what he was used to, where people would describe how he was sitting or holding himself or what he was wearing so that the viewers could get an idea. Okay. I'm like, that is true. Interesting. I like that. So... Uh, Mr. President, what do you think your spiritual mission was here on Earth? Uh, he he pulls down, you know how you reach up under your jacket sleeves and you kind of pull down your shirt sleeve? Mm-hmm. He adjusts that in his shoulders on both arms and mm-hmm. he says that his spiritual mission in this life was to help unite the people of the United States. In what way? Unite them in what way? Can you, be, uh, can you give us more detail? To give the common voice strength to feel that they themselves um, can make a difference. Okay. Did it have anything to do with um, the minorities, the, uh, any racial uh, unity? He he takes pride in himself in himself that he did not see the need to have race defined the way it was when he came into office. Um, he's smiling. Uh, he, he's saying that if you're asking if the unity that he tried to give structure to to the everyday person involved race? He said, yes, it did. It involved the elimination of the old definition of race. Okay. And he's telling me that it's only been in the last few years has he really seen his efforts um, reach some of its potential. Some of its potential, not all of it. And he's saying that's not because we have a half African American in office. Um, It is because, oh, he's saying this 
because he's listening to the language that kids are using. And it is not that of the language that their parents are using. He said there is a huge gap in this generation growing up. Um, what do I call him, Mr. President? I, that's what I say. Uh, Mr. President, what generation, when you say, has the hugest gap? Which age frame are you considering that to be? <clears throat> He's talking about ages 12 to 18. Okay. Now, are you saying that what I'm uh, I'm wondering if this unity um, uh, this uh, blur between all the races has anything to do with the you giving a common voice I mean a, a united voice to everyone if, if that had something to do with it because when you say you gave a voice to everyone it was all races obviously correct yes okay. yes ma'am um was it your destiny to die when and how you did? He's telling me, he makes eye contact the whole time. Mm. It's almost uncomfortable. I'm the one looking around the room. <laughs> he's telling me that that is a common ask question. And he's saying, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am, it is. Why? He uses the term God. It was God's divine timing. He said there's a perfect moment where you put um, gasoline on a fire mm -hmm. to make it take off. And he says there was a perfect moment in my career for me to step away and truly give the responsibility over to the people and take it off my plate. It was to his great sadness to watch his children and his family deal with the suffering and the loss. But it was such a position of pride. Oh, I just got this overwhelming sensation of like sweetness. It just like makes you want to cry. It's not oh, sad at all. Yes. Overwhelming sense of pride to watch people take on his, he's talking very slow, uh, to take on his fight. He's smiling the whole time. He's not compromising his um, posture or anything. It's weird. It's just like the emotion that comes over. Hmm. Highly patriotic, oh. which I don't often feel these days. Oh. <laughs> but um, feeling it now. Oh, wow. That is something. I can hear it in your voice. Well, why did you have to die the way you did? I mean, why couldn't you have just died of a heart attack? Why did it have to be so... A public death yeah. was necessary. And for it to be documented was necessary so that the people could see the corruption of the office. And why was there, why would that be, why would that show corruption in the office? What corruption are you talking about? He said, ma'am, I knew high and well that there was a, a price on my trip to Texas. Mm. Presidents in the past and in the future will not just mysteriously get knocked off. <laughs> and he says it with a little smirk on his face. Mm -hmm. Like He says it is a highly planned event. And you would be surprised how many ears there are listening to these planned events. <laughs> Anyone who has a political stance or a strong voice, such as Martin Luther King. We know our life is short term. A flame can only burn so bright, so quick, and that it must be passed on. Mm -hmm. For me, I passed it on to the people. 
And this is why it had to be a public viewing. Um, Eric clarifies a public viewing of death. He said, yes, sir. Hmm. Can you tell us who, and you, obviously you had a contract, a spiritual contract with your assassins, and it was Lee Harvey Oswald, etc. But did he do this of his own volition, or was there somebody who put him up to it? He's pausing. <clears throat> he said it is not it is not well known and documented that he had a group uh, supporting him. But he did have a feed of information that came from a government branch that fed his misconception of what my ultimate goals were as a president. And did, did this government branch uh, feed him this information purposefully? Yes. And what was your ultimate goal that he was so upset about? Giving everybody equal rights. Oh, you, are you talking about a racial uh, thing? He said, yes, ma'am, if you need to put it that way. Okay. Uh, what branch are we talking about? He flashes me a really nice smile and shakes his head now. He's not going to discuss it. Okay, so basically it was part of our government. The United States of America, correct. Now, why won't you divulge that, since it was a government from the past, it's not current people? He said, I'm sure you're highly aware that even though the people are no longer living, the structure is still in place. So whoever, whomever is coming in behind them is filling the shoes that were previously placed there for them. So corruption is still present. It would have been my ultimate dream to have had a government that was an open book. As you well know, our system needs restructuring as it stands. There is too much greed mm -hmm. and ego running a free country. And these two ideals collide. Yeah. Are you saying that it might be dangerous for us, for Jamie and, and uh, me also? Is that part of it? And now you, you pose no threat. <clears throat> no, would we... Says, Is that because we're small? <laughs> no, would we not be... We would... But would, would our lives be threatened if we publicized more specific information? No. He understood the question. He okay. Said no. Hmm. Okay. Were you here to learn anything? <laughs> uh, he straightens out his jacket in the front, and he says, maybe I was here to learn too much. And <laughs> he grins. You forget how uh, full his cheeks are. Mm-hmm. You know, he's got good pinchable cheeks. Oh, Please don't pinch them, Jamie. I'm I'm so far away from him. Trust me. <laughs> Please resist. <clears throat> At least I'm a little more relaxed than when he came in. Yeah. Um. Yeah, he feels that. Eric's clarifying and saying, well, was there one one area in your life that you feel you came into this life to polish, to get to know it better? Commitment. 
Okay. Commitment to a, to women, to a woman, or commitment to uh, an ideal or principle? Um, across the board, to um, to a marriage, to a term, to an ideal, to intimacy. Okay. Do you think that you accomplished that? He laughs, like, really out loud, pretty loud. Uh, he's telling me it's, it's, it's a 50-50 vote. <laughs> <laughs> a vote, of course. Do you think you accomplished your spiritual mission? Yes, ma'am. I think you did, too. Now, were you here? Obviously, you were here to teach something. What was that? Uh, he straightens up his posture and comes closer to the edge of the chair. He's, he's very well poised. Okay, sorry. <clears throat> yeah. I'm sorry. He f I was here in this life and given this great opportunity to be a public teacher a public figure, a public leader, to help show that every life that comes into this great nation has a purpose, has a right to be heard, and should, abo and should above anything, be honored in that way. That's great. Did you accomplish... Oh, I'm yeah. sorry. Go ahead. No, he said it was a struggle for himself to step outside of his family mirror. I don't. I don't know that word. I'm sorry. Like a family structure uh, to really get into the the hearts of people mm -hmm. that he would not have come across. Because <clears throat> was his family, uh, are you saying that your family uh, did not believe some, uh, in uh, equality as much as you did? <clears throat> My family believed in it but didn't know how to reach out for it. I see. They let their status and their comforts secure them in a place where it, it narrowed their sight. I see. And I felt it was my mission to help broaden the vision of every American and really embrace all the colors of our nation. Mm. Now if you we stand united, we stand strong. There we go. Did you, do you think you accomplished that? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Good. Did you, uh, did you have any insights when you first crossed over? I have to admit, I was relieved. Why? I knew the burdens and the struggles I was about to step into. I knew more than ever the years to come, and my leadership needed to be stronger than they were in the past. And I confess, I was a bit tired of coming across the charlatans mm. who claimed greatness but played foul. Mm. Okay. I was ready to be a, a family man, but in my position it wasn't going to let me. So when death came upon me that great day, I found relief. That's wonderful. Are you currently reincarnated in in terms of sequential in, in terms of Earth time? Uh, in in this, uh, are, are you currently in another life right now? He said he is not currently within another life as of 2013. Okay. Uh, can you share a, another life 
that most influenced this life here in that, that that you are JFK, President John F. Kennedy. He said he would gladly, I would gladly share. Um, he sits back. You know how you put your pointer fingers together, almost like to make a steeple on a church? Mm -hmm. He has his pointer fingers up, but the other ones are laced together. Okay. And he has his pointer fingers placed like at the, around his lips or on his chin. Okay. Like it's on his face. It's like a thinking pose or something. I can see him doing that. <clears throat> He's telling me there was a life. <laughs> um, he was a he was a little boy. Uh, yeah, if if you describe it, it's easier for me. He's giving me pictures and he's just highlighting things like he's Caucasian. Mm -hmm. And this is in an English life mm -hmm. in England. So I told him, why don't you tell me the story, and I'll just repeat your words. The age he's showing me is about, yeah, he was three years old. Mm -hmm. Three. <clears throat> he was raised by two sisters mm -hmm. uh, of a wealthy family. The R Rutledge. Rutledge and oh my god it reminds me of those candies Worth Worthington okay no I guess it's Worthers that's the candy right oh yeah okay but I hear Worthing Worthington Rutledge and Worthington okay um <clears throat> the sisters have married uh, into well-to-do families. Mm -hmm. uh, but the husbands were off at war. Mm -hmm. uh, so they came together to raise the children. And he was one of the, the kids. And he keeps showing me this image of running through very manicured garden. Mm -hmm. You know, those hedges that are just cut precise. The Oh, yeah. The huge fountains. I mean, it, it's amazing. It's like what I would see in a movie. Mm. And he's just cutting loose. Freeze a bird running. And he says, I remember hearing my name and hearing my name being called. And he said, so I stopped and sat down underneath uh, one of the shrubs where he, couldn't, he could not be seen. And he tucked his legs up under. He remembers the the nannies talking. They're speaking English, so this is England. Mm -hmm. um, anyways, the, the nannies are talking about the war that's going on and how concerned they are for their families. But no one in the house has ever mentioned that these nannies even have families. Mm. And he said it was the first time... I became aware that other people have lives, that other people are not just there to serve me mm. or to serve my mom or my auntie. And he said when he ran back to the house and he asked his mother about his nanny's family, mm -hmm. uh, she shooed him away. You know, it's no concern of yours. Everything is fine. Mm. And he said he cried because he, his mother did not know the nanny's father's name. Oh, the mother gosh. had no idea of the, the nanny's life outside of her world. Mm. And he wanted so badly um, to make everything okay. He says, I remember telling my nanny that she would be okay and I was consoling her. I wanted a lifetime where I could make people see into anyone's eyes and know their story. Mm. 
Yes, how profound. And you did. He's pausing. Mm -hmm. He nods his head and he said, yes, ma'am, I did. Mm. And on that note, do you have any messages for humanity or advice? He said he loves He, he loves the saying, uh, it's Gandhi, uh, be the change you want to see in the world. Mm -hmm. It's so, your responsibility to teach the person next to you, no matter where you are, on the bus, on the train, in line. It is your responsibility to teach, and to teach without ego, to teach with compassion, and be the change you want to see in the world. Well put. Lisa, All right. Thank you so much for having me today. You're welcome. Eric. May your, may your day be blessed. Oh, thank you, and yours too. Eric, what questions do you have for Mr. President? John F. Kennedy. None. 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 Uh, okay, well, thank you so much. We really enjoyed it, and we, I, for one, learned so much from you. I'm a little bit clipped. <laughs> I know, I me too. Me. Thank you for coming. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he changed. He changed the face of the nation as we see it. Yeah. Well, he's amazing. I don't know how you do it, Jamie. See, I'm on the other line. I, I'm like, a, you know, I'm I'm hundreds and hundreds of miles away on in the telephone line, but you're over there just facing them. <laughs> <clears throat> when he got up, he straightened his jacket and kind of brushed the top side of his pants and just kind of turned and walked off into the wall. Wow. Eric wanted to ask him about Marilyn Monroe, and I told him no. Ooh, no. He has no <laughs> questions. I was like, let the man go. <laughs> no, God. Well, I'm sure that he probably heard that, though. Well, I know he heard it. He looked straight at me, and I apologized to him. And I just said, move on, because I knew if I opened my mouth and I put sound to it, that we were going to have to go down a really weird path. I know, I know. <laughs> I was just like, well, no. he's probably. I was wondering, he's probably with her. I bet you. <laughs> oh, we won't go there. Oh my God. Mm -mm.